Shadwell Farm, home to world-class stallions, presents two young stars, Mo Heyman, undefeated two-year-old, multiple graded stakes winner at two and three, a dazzling son of Tappet, winner of his first five career starts, four in graded stakes, grade one winner, Tamar Coos, winner of the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, this son of Spitestown was a top international miler that earned over $1.8 million. Shadwell Farm, building speed for the future. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off a pick four on Breeders' Cup Saturday with race number six. This, the Dirt Mile, two-turn Dirt Mile. Our coverage is presented by Tamar Coos at Shadwell Farm. You want to see a good Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner? Go on YouTube. Check out Tamar Kuz's victory in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He beat some really good horses, and he did it the right way. He's standing at Shadwell Farm. Here's the field for this year's Dirt Mile. $1 million, of course, a two-turn Dirt Mile at Santa Anita, Omaha Beach, the number five. Eight to five morning line favorite stretching out off a six furlong race, Mike, at Santa Anita, in which... He was chasing a lone speed and he ran him down. All credit to the connections, all credit to this horse. I know you've not been a big fan of him throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Obviously, he deserves a lot of credit for his win last time. Um, he's a really talented horse. He's got a lot of hype around him, Dan. I think that's the thing that I object to more than anything else. Um, but he's obviously talented. He feels like he feels like he's going to be a really short price in this race. Oh, he should be a short price in this race. A lot of horses that were cross-centered in the dirt mile. He opted for the sprint. Omaha Beach, now your clear morning line favorite. Let's look at the time form U.S. pace projector because if Cold Front gets loose, he might be able to make them pay with some of his back races. This horse won the Godolphin Mile this year. He is a multiple graded stakes winner. Last time out, he showed some heart in the park's dirt mile. Todd needed to find an easy spot for him because it looked like he went off form during the summer. And as we look at the park's dirt mile, he's involved in a pitched battle with Diamond King turning into the stretch. And He's just a little bit better on the day down towards the inside. Diamond King might not want to go this far against top-level horses, but it was at least good to see Cold Front get back into form. And again, if he gets loose, he might hang around for a while. Yeah, no, that, those things are all true. Um, this does feel like his distance. Um, this win that we're looking at, maybe not the most impressive win of his career, but he got it done. He was basically in a race-long duel there, and he prevailed. Give him a little credit for that. Um, he likes the, the mile. I think this will really work for him, especially if he gets loose. I, I don't think this is going to be necessarily a super slow pace, Dan. I don't think he has a huge advantage as far as the way the race is going to be run, but he's a good horse at his best distance. The number one giant expectations has not won since opening day of the 2017 Santa Anita winter meet, the San Antonio Stakes. Now, he took down a big scalp in Accelerate. He also had a candy trip when collected the expected pace for some reason didn't go to the lead and giant expectations went 49 to the half and he won. He has been rock solid since then without winning. Let's go back to the Pat O'Brien going seven furlongs. He's got favored Catalina Cruiser hooked here. He's on the outside in the green hat. It looks like he's on his way. Maybe this little layoff from May to August finally gets to him within the last 16th of a mile or maybe Catalina Cruiser is slightly better. Yeah, it's probably a combination of those. Certainly, Catalina Cruiser is a really nice horse. Um, this horse ran well in here. He's a he's a really good horse. Giant expectations on his good day, um, he could make some noise in this race. Um, he was the horse that I liked and bet in this race last year. He was twenty two to one. He ran like he was three times that price. Maybe he'll run better this time. But Peter Erton put blinkers on in his last two races, and we've seen some really determined performances from Giant Expectations. Do you think he's kind of a tweener though? Do you like him better at seven? I do like him as a seven for a longer time. I don't think the mile is too far for him. I just don't necessarily think it's his best distance. Great trivia question. Who was the beaten favorite in the Kentucky Derby in Preakness in 2019? And the answer is improbable. Who came out of that race to win the shared belief over King Jack, who then came back to win with a monstrous buyer speed figure when turning back in the gallant Bob Stakes at Parks. Last time out in the Pennsylvania Derby, I don't think he got the right trip. He didn't break. He was down inside. I guess if you wanted to take someone out of the Pennsylvania Derby, it's probably improbable. But this is a horse. He gets a little bit nutty behind the gate, too. And isn't that trustworthy lead? Yeah, that, that is a, a big problem for him. I think you're right. His, his Pennsylvania Derby, is it's okay. It does even feel like nine furlongs is probably not what this horse really wants. Um, so cutting back to the mile helps him. He needs to get out of the gate. He did not break at all in the, part, in the Pennsylvania Derby. He had his head turned 
when they opened it and it really cost him. This is a talented horse, though, Dan. I think he's a contender again. Spun to run, bounced out of his fifth place finish in the Pennsylvania Derby with this race. A little stakes race at Parks, and I don't know where this race came from, but he was awesome. From a visual standpoint, he just destroyed these horses. And then when the buyer came back, I was stunned and did a triple take because it was a 110 buyer speed figure. And if you believe Andy here and you watch this race, you're saying Spun to Run all of a sudden has found himself and he is a major contender. I can understand anybody who's dubious about that fig. Um, yeah, you know, whether or not he's going to run back to that, I have no idea. If he does, he'll probably be a Breeders' Cup winner at the end of the day on Saturday. Um, because if he runs at one time, he's just going to win. He ran great in there. A couple of horses have come back out of there um, and run really well in their own rights. Um, this horse, you know what? He's always been pretty good, too, Dan. It took him a while to get there, but he's always been pretty good. And it really does look like this might be his best distance. The one-mile distance feels like it hits this horse right between the eyes took the words right out of my mouth. Mile, mile 70, mile and a 16th, that spun to run. Let's see if he can get close to the pace. They might be going a little bit faster than they did last time out at Parks. Mr. Money had a four race win streak snapped in the Pennsylvania Derby. How? They turn into the stretch, he had everything his own way. They're walking on the lead, 49 and three, 113 and two. He's got everybody beat at the 316s. He gets run down by Math Wizard, who's gonna run in the Classic and Good for Math Wizard, but he's a million to one in this race. It's a disappointing loss, Justin. I mean, he's pretty game here to the end, and he just can't put the race away, and he gets beat um, by a horse who just didn't make a lot of sense in the race. Um, so it's disappointing from that respect. I, this is a pretty good horse, though. I Absolutely. still think I know he stretched out relatively effectively, but he's better at a mile. This is a better distance for this horse. Um, he's just, he's a really hard horse to ride. He, he, was not, he doesn't settle early in his races. And even in that Pennsylvania Derby, it almost felt like they didn't want to lead with him. They had him under a huge hold um, first time through the stretch, but he would not relax in there. So I think it cost him at the end. If they can get him covered up and he can get a trip, he can beat this people. I agree with you, uh, and I think you make a very good point about the distance, because they could have run this horse in the Travers. The timing was perfect for him there. Maybe they just thought the mile and a quarter was a little bit too far. They opted for the Pennsylvania Derby. Obviously, when maximum security was withdrawn, that took away perhaps their target. I agree. I don't think they wanted to leave. He's a very, very nice horse. I just don't think he's supposed to lose yeah. to Math Wizard with that trip. Here's Omaha Beach. Some might argue he's the best three-year-old in the country despite missing the entire Triple Crown series. He would have been the favorite in the Derby after he won the Rebel and the Arkansas Derby. He came back off a long layoff and they would skip this race and they skip this race and they skip this race and they skip this race. And Dick Mandela said, I gotta get a race into this horse for the Breeders' Cup. Ah, let's go six. And everyone was like, you crazy? You're running against a lone speed and chance a lot. Mandela's smart. This horse showed good speed to stay close to the pace. Chancelot, for some reason, comes up the, off the rail. Omaha Beach comes up the rail. Omaha Beach was good here. I mean, there's, there's just a lot to like about this performance. A race he easily could have lost. You know, if he finishes second by a half length of Chancelot, I think people still give this horse a lot of credit. Um, as it turns out, he ran that horse down. Um, it feels like getting more distance under him helps him. You know, again, he's a really nice horse that I don't really want to knock him. I just, you know, I don't know how good he is, and I just don't necessarily feel like I want to take a super short price on him in this race. I'm not leaving him out, but I'll try and beat him in there. Ambassadorial, the number six. These connections are taking a shot for the dirt uh, try. He's run once before on dirt in Korea. He finished third in the nine furlong Korea Cup. It was over a wet track. He's sort of a synthetic handicapper overseas. And while maybe this isn't the strongest dirt mile in the world, this might be too strong for him. Yeah, and it feels like they're shipping into a tough spot. He's a tough race to evaluate, obviously, but um, it doesn't feel like he's supposed to be a major player in this race. We talked briefly about Cole Front at the beginning. He's eight for 12 in his career. I know you've never been a big fan of this horse, but he does have some big wins on his resume. And again, he might be able to get to an easy lead, although I'm not sure the time form US is right with that uh, pace projector, having him so far in front. When you have horses like Omaha Beach and Mr. Money that can stalk. I agree. I think the pace will be a little bit more contested than that. Uh, not that it has to necessarily adversely affect this horse. He's a, look, he's a really nice horse. I'm just not a huge fan of this. 
Real nice story coming from Korea. The number eight blue chipper who's won six in a row, seven of eight. He won the Korea sprint last time out. He is capable at a mile. I have no idea what he's been beating over there, but they're going to take a shot and they got Pratt. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea what he's been beating either. He won the mile race two back. Um, very easily in that race. He had speed in that race, but he sort of sat off the pace, and then he just got away very late um, in the race. He got away. They cut him back last time. He worked a lot harder to win, um, but he did manage to get it done. I don't know if he classes up at all in here, Dan, but he's got a really nice record and a good rider. Diamond Oops is good on turf. Diamond Oops is good on dirt. We've seen it in his last few races. It all started with the smile sprint where he came from sort of nowhere to win at $14 with a 97 buyer. It propelled him to a 30 to one chance in the Alfred G. Vanderbilt. And we turn into the stretch there, and you got two of the best sprinters in the country in this race, and Matoli and Imperial Hint, and Forenze Fire is no bum either. Diamond Oops gets to the outside, arguably the better part of the track that day, but he's running to get second. And he came out of this race with a very surprising second in the grade one Shadwell turf mile. It looks like he is in career form he breeds seven furlongs and 22 on the turf for this. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I've been a fan of this horse from the start. And obviously things haven't, you know, gone perfectly for me. Basically missed his entire three-year-old year. year. Um, he's come back really good this year, though. I know that when you go, you know, the only race that you can really point to maybe is the Vanderbilt. And then even in that case, you can say, well, he sort of, defaulted into second when Matole and Forenze Fire got maybe worse trips than he did, and he picked up second. I still thought he ran in that race. His smile sprint was good. He ran really well last time in a race where he was taking a ton of pressure on the lead um, and just got run down late. I don't know. Turf to dirt makes sense to me. The mile feels like it should be a good distance for him. I think there are things to like with this horse. Snapper Sinclair has been a consistently good horse for a long time for Steve Asmussen. Just never thought of him as a grade one Breeders' Cup type horse. He got a win three back on a sloppy track when he got an easy early lead and he kept right on going. He was an okay third at Mountaineer two starts back. He got his big signature win on turf last time out. I believe his first preference was one of the turf races. He got excluded. So here is Snapper Sinclair finding a tough spot. Yeah, he's not hopeless on dirt. Um, he's actually run some good races. He really did run uh, really well to win the Tourist Mile last time. So he comes in here in good form. I don't know if he's good enough to beat this field, Dan, but he's not bad. Top pick time for the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, kicking off a pick four. I'm, I believe in Andy. I'm going with Spun to Run's 110 buyer. That 110 buyer blew me away the way he won it blew me away. It looked like a public workout. I'm that way against Omaha Beach. I got to use him. I went three, five, nine, and one. I used my third selection as your, t your top selection is my third selection. That's Diamond Oops. I don't want to uh, put that horse out at a big price. Yeah, it's interesting. I think we both sort of um, are recognizing Omaha Beach is probably the horse to beat in here. Um, we both put him second, though. I'm going to take a chance with, with Diamond Oops. I, I like this horse. I think he's going to get a good trip in this race. Um, so I'll take him, and, and we'll just see what happens with Omaha Beach. I'm not even that far against him probable either, Dan. I think he's a pretty nice horse. If he breaks, he can get the right trip in there. Oh, so many good horses in this race. Mr. Money as well, very, very consistent. Giant expectations, very, very consistent. It's a good race, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Our coverage is presented by Tamar Kuz, a Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner standing at Shadwell Farm.